Today I want to show you my favorite method for fixing a cracked ring on a Quest 2. I would say of all of the issues that we get with the Quest 2 controllers, the cracked outer ring here is probably the second most common. The most common thing is probably joystick drift, but this is definitely a close second. When you are dealing with a cracked ring like this, there are a few factors to take into consideration. And really all of those factors kind of revolve around the severity of the damage. This controller here is a really good example of something that's really easy to repair because the only thing that's really damaged is this outer ring here. I get a lot of controllers that look like this where, yeah, the ring is cracked, but also the internal ring is cracked and the ribbon seems like it's taken some damage too. And based on the fact that this little peg is here stuck in the ring, it's probably damaged the frame as well. And in fact, you can see that it has damaged the frame. So this one's definitely more severe than this one. Another thing I really like to look for is, okay, the, the frame is intact, the ring on the inside is intact, but how are the LED ribbons? If you take your ring off and you see a little bit of wear and tear like this, or if you see that the ribbon is completely severed like it is on this ring here, then you're in trouble. Because at this point, even though this inner ring is kind of intact, it's got a crack in it, but it is, it is intact, and even though it's intact, this, this ribbon needs to be replaced anyway, so a simple outer ring repair is not going to fix the problem. This ring here I had to pull out of our trash bin because you can see that uh, pretty much everything on here is bad in some way, shape, or form. But this ring's actually pretty good, and it's pretty salvageable. This controller seems to work and actually track very well. The only real problem that the customer had with this ring is that it's cracked. And so what do we do from here? There's, there's really two solutions as far as I'm concerned. We can replace the ring entirely with a new one that looks kind of like this. And that's a great solution except for the fact that these are really hard to come by. Med has not made these available even to repair companies like us. So the only rings that you can really find are the ones that are intact off of teardown controllers. And my experience with that is that they sell out very fast anytime that we get them up on the website. And that kind of leaves us with the second solution, which is just repairing the ring that's here. Before we go any further, I would like to ask that you consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It does help us out. Our social media channels like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram have become a great place for people to learn about the services that we provide and about how to repair their own devices if that's something that they want to do. If you're looking to do a repair like this and you need tools or you need parts, you can always check out our website, fixmyoculus.com. We've got lots of parts available for VR headsets and controller repairs. And with that out of the way, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into this and I'll show you how this is done. The first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my pry tool. Just like any controller repair, we need to take this faceplate off. I'm going to go around the outside bottom edge here and we're going to pop that off. We're just going to remove that adhesive and that one just came off really easy. Now we don't have to do a full controller teardown here, we just want the outer ring off. So I'm not going to worry about taking out all the screws, I'm just going to take out the four screws that hold the ring in. And that would be this screw here, these two screws at the top, and then this screw that's inset. Basically if they're facing out toward the ring, it holds the ring in, and if it's facing down, then it holds the board in or one of these components in from the frame side. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. For these screws, I'm just going to use my T5 bit, and we're just going to go ahead and take these screws out. Alright, and now both parts of this ring should just come off, and now we've got the whole ring in two pieces here. and it fits together quite nicely. Step two is I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol here and we're gonna clean this off. I'm just gonna clean off both sides of the ring so that there's not a whole lot of dust and dirt and debris. Sometimes there's little marks and things or a little bit of liquid that's kind of gotten in the cracks. We just wanna make sure that none of that stuff's present here for the adhesion process. Just gonna make sure that's as clean as we can get it within reason. I'm not gonna sit here and scrub it all day. But just as long as there's no dirt debris in that crack, we're good. And then we gotta dry it off a little bit. All right, step three is I'm gonna take a super glue that's fairly viscous, something that's uh, pretty thick and will hold in place for more than a millisecond. You don't wanna use a super thin uh, adherent like a modeling glue. Um, 
I know there's some modeling glues that are of various viscosities, but you want to use something that's that's kind of gel-like and dries clear is a is a key factor here. So I've been using this Gorilla Glue, this super glue gel, and I find that it one dries very clear and two holds pretty well in place while I'm trying to place these things. And then we're going to run a bead all the way down this seam. And if there's a little bit extra, that's okay. This, this process does not have to be brain surgery. It's, it's designed to be an easy solution. So, and then we're going to take our two pieces here and we're going to marry them so that there is no seam in the middle. And I've got no daylight show in there. We're pretty well aligned at the top and we're well aligned at the bottom. And then that gel has compressed inside the crack and around the outside. Your next step here is we're going to take some baking soda and then we're going to just dust it. All along where that super glue was. And this does a couple things. The baking soda gets inside the super glue and creates a bit of a compound that's way tougher than the super glue or the plastic is on its own. And number two is that it helps it dry very fast and efficiently. Now I've got that fully covered and I'm pretty confident that baking soda seeped into every little bit of super glue that is or was wet. And now I'm gonna let it cure. I'm gonna give this about 15, 20 minutes to cure. Theoretically, you could let this cure and harden overnight if you wanted to. But for my purposes, with the addition of the baking soda, it really should take almost no time at all. So I'm just going to let it cure until that is super solid to the touch, and I feel confident that it is cured and dried all the way through. All right, so we let this dry for about 30 minutes, uh, just to make sure it was nice and dry. The idea is to get it to where it's dry enough to where we can take our next step here, which of course is sanding and leveling. Because we don't want the ring to look like this. We want it to be nice and even and feel smooth to the touch. Even if you can kind of see the repair line, we don't want it to feel that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sanding block here and you can just get a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper. I'd say 100 to 120 grit would work. This sanding block here has a variety of grits on it. So I find that different things kind of help depending on how much elbow grease I'm willing to put into it. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the edge off here. All right, and then as you can see, what we're left here with is a ring that's fully intact and a repair that's very stable and secure. And now we just have a small little reminder of a break that once was. I've been kind of wiggling around like this for a little bit just to make sure that everything's good and secure and that my glue and baking soda compound is holding. I feel like it is. I feel like it's a really good amount of stress that I can put on it here. So I feel good with that. And so with that said, we'll go ahead and put it back on here. Then I just want to take a battery and make sure that the ring still works. Perfect. I've got an LED there. So that means that our ring is still working and I didn't mess it up. I hope this looks as good on camera as it does to my eyes. But as you can see, that is a pretty good result for tools and supplies that cost you less than a two topping Domino's medium sized pizza. Like I said earlier, as long as the ribbons underneath and the inner ring aren't broken, for the cost of baking soda, glue, a decent screwdriver from our website, you can make it look almost like it never happened. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. 
and it gets you back into VR again. If you do have any questions or any repairs that you'd like to see, please leave us a comment below. And if you haven't had a chance yet, please do consider liking and subscribing. It really helps us and helps keep the channel growing. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us and we will see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.